Paul, first for you, after United 93, after Captain Phillips, the energy and, I don't know, the devotion it must have taken to undertake another film within the, what's becoming a sad sort of subgenre for us to deal with terrorism. What made you do this? Um, I think because because uh, I'm a parent of of young adults and um, I'm concerned about the way the world's going, particularly the rise of this immensely strong populist hard right reaction in the world at the moment. And I'm not talking about you know. Democrat, Republican, Conservative, Labour in our country, you know, conservatism, and liberalism, that that passionate, energetic debate is what democracy is about. You know, I'm talking about elements that are anti-democratic. And uh, wherever you look in Europe, uh, and certainly in the US too, these, these forces are on the rise, and they're on the rise because... You know, our economies are not functioning as well as they should. Um, and immigration and fear of immigration is driving politics. And uh, and there's a, 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 a movement towards the irrational, frankly. And you can see it, you know, Sweden four weeks ago elected a, a neo-Nazi party to hold the balance of power. That's the same in Austria. It's... Germany has the AFD, very, very strong indeed, the second largest party and growing in the Bundestag. The AFD youth is even uh, further to the right. In fact, it's uh, under surveillance now in three regions for being anti-democratic. Poland, Hungary are, are um, strongly authoritarian. Italy now has a hard right-wing populist government. The UK, we have a problem. France, obviously Macron won, but the Front National will be back. Charlottesville, you know, where do you, where, you know, you can make a list. Brazil last week. Mm. Um, we have some significant issues for sure. And this touches on all of those, but it's a feature film. And it's a feature film that you, an Englishman, made in a country that would feel, I think, a little sensitive about this. Um, well, um, you make a film like this by asking permission of the people involved, um, which we did. In fact, the first person I went to see was Jens Stoltenberg, who is Secretary General of NATO now, but obviously was Norwegian Prime Minister and, and uh, is a very well, I would say, a well-loved figure for, for his role in bringing his country through this. And I went to see him in Brussels precisely to ask him if he thought it was would be helpful or not. And I thought he'd be a, give a cautious political read on it. And obviously if he'd said, don't do it, I wouldn't have bothered to trouble the families. Literally the first thing when I sat down in his office, the first thing he said was, you obviously need to ask the families, but I really hope you make this film because this thing is, the word he used was metastasizing and it's coming at us fast and people need to understand what's what's going on here. Then we ask the families and of course there's no group of people who understand these issues more than they do and they were strongly supportive and um, have remained so having now seen the film. So, but obviously I'm an outsider um, but I was very blessed to have a an all Norwegian cast and an all Norwegian crew and um, with the exception of Billy there, it's <laughs> Norwegian's quite fluent. It's probably picked up a bit, yes, yeah, in the meantime. Yeah. Um, no, but it made it uh, a special film, for, you know, just setting aside the subject of the film for a moment, because it f meant that I was really helping them tell their story rather than telling them what their story was, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Seda and Eunice, this is your first feature film, um, you had to do it in a language which is not your native language. And you were, you know, teenagers, very young, 20-year-old, when, when all this happened. So what went through your minds as you considered doing the role, and what did you learn about your country, yourselves, this incident, as you did it? Um, 
yeah, of course, it was uh, it was a challenge to do it in in English. But when, well, I can only speak for myself. But when I learned that Paul was doing this film, uh, I knew that this subject was going to be handled in a very respectful way. Um, and as Paul mentioned, he he really helped us tell the story, and he was very free in the way of um, he allowed us to to improvise a lot and we talked very much about how it was um, because I think all Norwegians know exactly where they were on that particular day um, and it's a story that's very close to to all Norwegians and and I spoke to to Lara um, both before we started filming and, and during and and when I spoke to her, I knew that I had to focus on her, her strength, um, because she she shows up to the hospital a few um, few days after, and and she's really there for the rest of of the people who are on the island. And I was so inspired by by this, and so I knew I had to focus on on her strength. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and Yunus? Yes. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think, um, as Seda said, I think Paul Greengrass is the perfect director to to make a film about this because of his previous films. Um, and the fact that we were talking English, uh, even though it was, uh, of course, very difficult in the beginning, but I think it gave us a distance to to the topic in the way that, because we knew this so well, so it kind of helped us to focus on what we had to focus on and not to feel because i spoke with i spoke with Villier, um before we started shooting and just a few minutes into my first conversation with him i i realized that the thing i need to focus on doing this part is to really tell the world how how brave he was to to go through this whole recovery journey and then in the end go into this courtroom and sit down face to face with the man who wanted him dead. Um, and I didn't, I really wanted to do that in a respectful way and, and with heart and I didn't want to overdo anything or, or play it too big, if you understand what I mean. And so, so I actually think that speaking English helped me with that. Yeah, and also a different aspect of this was speaking English uh, allowed the film to be seen by so many more people, and especially young people uh, having it on on Netflix, and and that's so important because it's a story about what happened in Norway seven years ago, but it's a story that it's very it's very important for the rest of the world to to see and to learn and to see what can happen in Norway. Billy. I Paul made, I think, the aesthetically correct and sort of morally correct decision of starting with the crimes and then telling the story from there. How difficult was it to keep everything in balance, not to have too much of the crime or, or not to have too much of the victimhood? Because then you would, in a sense, rob it of its strength, I suppose. Um, you know, that's something that I think happens by, uh, I mean, that's why I think they call it editing a, editor, a process because you know at the beginning everything is much longer everything there's way more material than we possibly would need and and so as we went along in the cut it became clear that to keep it keep the you know just as per, in terms of keeping audience on the edge of their seat and um not being in one place too long and trying to keep all these balls in the air at the same time. I mean, it, it kind of it happens by feel. You know, when when as I'm I'm putting myself in the uh, in the seat of the audience, trying to figure out when do we want to see what's here, when do we want to see what's there, when do, what, what connections can we make emotionally in the juxtapositions of each little particular piece that'll that'll keep the strength of the piece and keep it you know keep it exciting and keep it you know uh, gripping for an audience. So a lot of that happens over time and by sort of by feel. In brief, what do you hope for this film? I Any differently from the other? I films? hope that young people watch it. Uh, that's my biggest hope, and that was why I partnered with Netflix on it because you know Netflix are 
course, they're trying to develop this theatrical, genuine theatrical um, uh, identity now. And this will be one of the very first films where they've done it. Uh, you know, a couple of hundred screens or whatever it is. But but when you link that with the platform, you're getting to young people. Millions of screens, actually. Yeah. No, I'm talking about theatrical. I know you are, but I'm talking about the little ones in no, the pockets. No, I, I remember I went talking to my kids and they said, you got to do it on Netflix because our, f our friends won't go and see it at the art house cinema, which is what a film like this would, would, would reach. And, that, of course, we would want it not to be that way, but that's the truth. Young people don't tend to go to art house films. Uh, so you're taking it to the audience? Yes, because young people... I think are interested in this. Uh, I genuinely do believe. Well, we'll, we'll presumably find out in the next few days. But but uh, um, they're the ones who are going to have to fight this, as Lippestad says in that final scene. Won't you please thank our panel for this film? <laughs>